Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please press that like button and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me out a ton. In this video, I'm going to be continuing on the Spotify series. So if you don't know, I've been building Spotify using Ruby on Rails. And I really just want to show more people how they can build a streaming platform like Spotify. Alright guys, so I'm probably going to start on the artist section because those are the people who are going to be getting paid on this app. So I'm just going to sign up as a new artist. And obviously this isn't my real email. What should my stage name be? How about, oh do we already use one little indigo? Little indigo dreamer. That sounds cool. Alright, so I'll sign up. This is what our artist dashboard looks like. So you can post your song, view your songs, edit the account, sign up. Pretty simple, right? But the next thing we're going to add is like a get paid link, which is probably the best part of this. Or maybe we'll even just put the form right here. But basically this all starts uh, by using Stripe as the library for payments. So we're going to have to go generate our Stripe keys, create the app on their website so we can have that all set up. And then we can use their embedded form to just put it right here on the page. We'll have to use some stimulus and that'll just tie everything together so you can sign up as an artist. Well, you already signed up as an artist, but you can put in your payment information so you can get paid, which is pretty important. So first of all, let's go over to Stripe and we're going to create our new Stripe app for this. Because inside Stripe, they call them apps. So we're gonna have to create our Stripe app and then we'll get the keys for this particular Spotify app. And then we can set that all up. All right guys, so I just signed into Stripe and right now I'm in one of my other apps. So you can see it right in the top left corner. We have this little drop down. I have a bunch of different apps. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click create new account. And now we're gonna have to put in a name. So of course I'm gonna put in the name of our app, which I guess I'll just call it Spotify Rails. And I'm gonna press create. And just like that, we have a new Stripe account for our Rails app. So this is perfect. So from here, we have the publishable key and the secret key. So we're gonna be using these. And yeah, we can go like the first step really is installing Stripe, which is just adding the gem. So we can do that right now. Let's open up the terminal. I'm gonna run a bundle add Stripe command. So we can add the Stripe library. Just like that, we got Stripe. And now we can set our credentials. So I'm gonna use the Rails credentials. And to do that, we have to specify an editor. I'm gonna use BIM. And now let's type Rails credentials colon edit. And then the environment is gonna be development. Just like that, we're inside of our credential file. And I can add the credentials. So I'm gonna add a Stripe namespace. And we'll do PK for the public key. So I'm just going to copy that. Put it in right there. And then we can do SK for the secret key. Drop that in also. And then I can just right quit. And now we have our credentials in our app. But we still need to set them up with the Stripe library, like the Stripe gem. So we can actually look up install Stripe docs. Um, Ruby, we probably need to look for like the Ruby gem. I guess we just find it on the GitHub. So we're supposed to do a gem install Stripe. And then we have to set the API key. So I think that's it. We just set the secret key. So we can do that in an initializer. That's what I usually do. So let's open up the code. I'm just gonna close all these files real quick. All right, so now we're in our code. I'm gonna go over to the config initializers folder and I'll create a new file called stripe.rb. This is where we'll put any initialization we need for Stripe, which is really only just setting the API key. So let's go back here. We'll say stripe API key is equal to rails.application.credentials.gig and then we'll use stripe and SK because we need the secret key. So just like that, we are setting our Stripe API key. And from here, we're basically ready to start adding stuff. Oh, except for 
we do need to configure our connect section since we're going to be using connect which is a part of stripe to allow you to create market paces so you can have people sign up add their bank account and everything and then they can you can accept payments on behalf of them so to set up connect we have to go to this more drop down and then click on connect and you're actually gonna have to go through like this little sign up page to use connect so it's like okay continue they're gonna ask us about how we're gonna be doing stuff in our app so how will funds flow on the platform basically we're gonna be in the middle there's two options you can have the sellers directly collect the payments and, or you can be in the middle so you accept the payments for from the buyers and then you give it out to the sellers that's what we're gonna be doing we can continue it says review and confirm responsibilities if buyers purchase from you you'll be liable for refunds and chargebacks so that's what we are expecting now we have to accept something for that refund and chargeback part and then we can continue so how will sellers be paid out basically we could say like payouts will be split between sellers which i don't know if spotify does that do they pay do they split payments between artists if like they've collabed on a song so if there's multiple people working on one song you would pay multiple artists and you like split the money up i feel like i don't know if spotify even does that but we will do that i think in our platform because i think that that would be good to accept so yeah like buyers collect the payment from buyer and split the payout between multiple sellers i feel like that's pretty important to this app let's continue now we have to select the industry that best matches so for us it would be like music so i wonder what the best match for music is mm. <laughs> There's really not not really one that describes us. We could go with the other. Where will sellers create their account? There's a few different options. You can use our API and then build an onboarding flow from scratch. I kind of want to do that, but also I don't want to do it right now. Let's just use an embedded checkout, but we'll do that. We'll try to build our own like front end for Stripe sometime. That might be fun. But for right now, let's use the embedded checkout. Wait, why did I call it checkout? The embedded onboarding flow. They have another feature called embedded checkout, which we're also probably going to use uh, at some point, actually. I don't know. Because this app is kind of different. Unless we're like selling merch or selling some sort of product, that's when we need the checkout. All right, where will sellers manage their accounts? I think it would also be an embedded account component. Let's continue. And it says that we're responsible for collecting requirements using Stripe API. Okay. I accept the terms. And just like that, we should be able to continue. And maybe, maybe that's good. Oh, now we have to activate our account, which means we have to add some personal information, like basically our address and a few things just to verify us as a person. Looks like we also need a, like an ID driver's license or something interesting okay so i'm going to go through the activate your account step i'm not going to record it because it's just going to be all personal information and then i'll come back so now we're at the part where we're just putting in a little bit of information about the business so like the industry which i guess we'll do entertainment yeah musicians bands that looks right and then the business website so this would be whatever domain you're planning on using i just put it spotify Although, you do like dash rails. I don't know if it actually checks the domain. Yeah, it does. So, I'm going to use Spotify for now because that works. And then we can do a product description. Uh, music streaming platform that pays musicians fairly. Let's continue. Right, guys. So, I'm mostly through the process right now. I added my bank and now I get to choose when my payout schedule is. So that means whenever you can take money out and like transfer it to your bank. So we could have it go automatic every day or we could do manual. Now the thing about this app is we're going to be taking in large amounts of money from subscriptions 
and, but then we have to give it back to the artist. So if I just have it automatically take the money, put it in my bank account, it might be trickier to give back to the artist. So I think I'm going to do a manual mode, which means all the money will get saved inside of Stripe. So whenever we need to pay out artists, I think we might even pay out artists at like a specific time. Maybe, actually I care more about the artists than I do myself, really. I want to make sure that the artists are getting paid as soon as the money is available. So we'll think about all these things in this series. But yeah, I just, I think I'm going to do a manual withdrawal because I just don't want the money going directly to the bank account. All right, there we go. I just submitted it. I think we're good to go with connect. So I don't see anything updated here, but if I, oh, actually, no, I do see connect. Now it's popped up right as one of my products. So that's sick. We click, we don't have any accounts right now. Oh wait, it still says two steps remaining. I have to verify an identity document. Oh, that's annoying. But I think we are basically ready to go with the connect. Oh, also, let's go to test mode. So I guess I basically, I got to the point where like we're ready for production almost because I filled out all that information. Did I actually, did I use the live key as the credentials? No way. Let's go back. No, we use the test key. It's just because I filled out all the information now that they're they're showing like we could actually launch this app into production. But I'm going to go into test mode. And I'm looking for the Stripe Connect API key. I think to do that, I go over to settings and then connect. Oh, this was tricky. I remember I just did this the other day and it was actually tricky to find out where it is. Maybe onboarding options. Oh, and then we find OAuth and you get your client ID. So I'm going to copy this into our app, into the credentials, because I'm pretty sure we need it eventually for the onboarding. I'm going to put the connect client ID like that. All right. Now that looks pretty good. Yeah, we should be ready to add in the onboarding form to the artist dashboard. I guess even though they're asking me to verify the document and everything, it says that it's only for going live. So for test mode, I don't think that matters. We can just do as much testing as we want. I'm, I might not even have had to enter all that personal information. I'm not sure. Anyways, it'll be good to have because I definitely do want to launch this app also. I feel like a lot of the videos on my series, or a lot of series that I make, I just like forget about the app, but I built like this whole working platform. So we might as well release it and see if we can get users and like take it to the next level. See if we can make money off these apps that I create on the channel. That'd be really cool. And then I'll just give it back to the viewers, like the people that are watching. I can start doing like giveaways and just like rewarding you guys for watching the videos. I'd love to do that. All right, guys, so now we have the Stripe account set up. We have the keys in our Rails app. The next thing we have to do is add the onboarding form. So to do that, I'm just going to look up Stripe onboarding docs. Because I need the documentation. And actually, I want the embedded onboarding. There we go. There's all these different like parts of the Stripe documentation. There's like different ways to do it. As you can see, there's three different onboarding ways. I'm going to use embedded onboarding, which basically looks something like this. So the first thing, create an account and pre-fill information. So basically, we need an account saved. So we would do this for the artist. Stripe account create. So let's go into our code. Let's go in the app models, the artist RB. And we can create a method on the artist model for this. And create Stripe account. And it would just be creating the Stripe account like this. And then we need to save the ID onto the artist model. So we're also going to need a migration for a new attribute. The funny thing, I don't even know what this returns. 
if we were to like create a new Stripe account. Although we could just test this. Let's go test this in the console. It really doesn't matter how many Stripe accounts we create. The fact is we just need to create one and then save it on that artist model. And then we'll use that like the whole time that'll just have one Stripe account. But if we were to just run this in the console, this is what it does. It just creates the Stripe account just like this and it returns some JSON. So I think what we can do, I learned this trick. You can actually set a variable to the last thing from the console by setting it to underscore. Oh, look at that, it actually worked. I've never really done that, but now I called it Stripe. So if we were to get like the ID, the ID, there we go, we have the account ID. So that's all we need to save. Just take that Stripe account ID and then save it onto the artist model. So we're gonna need a field in the database on the artist table. So let's do that right now. Let's generate a migration. I'll do that by doing Rails G migration command. And it'll be add stripe account ID to artist. And yeah, we can just call the attribute a stripe account ID. Oh true, I no I accidentally put a bracket. Hopefully that didn't affect it. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it, wait, no, it tried to add this weird bracket. Okay, I'm gonna need to do a Rails D migration. We're gonna remove that. And let's do it again, but without the square bracket. Now we can cat this. Alright, that looks good to me. So let's migrate the database with Rails DB migrate. And boom. So now we have this code right here. The last thing we need to do is just update stripe account ID with this stripe account ID, just like that. And we should be good to go. Now I think I want to add this as a callback, like after create commit, create stripe account. So every time a new artist signs up, it will run this callback, which will create their stripe account and set their ID. But for right now, for all the artists who have already created their account and we haven't created that for them, let's just go into the Rails console by doing Rails C. And we can loop over them by doing find each. So artist.find each. And we can just say and create stripe account. Just like that. Boom, it should go through each artist and set their stripe account ID. There we go, one artist, two artists, three artists. I don't even know how many artists we have. Obviously they're all me because I'm the only one who's been signing up. So let me check the last artist now. Artist.last. Looks like, yo, they do have a Stripe account ID. So that's perfect. Boom, we got step one done, guys. Step one, let's move on to the next step. Determine the information to collect. So as the platform, you must decide if you want to collect the required information from your accounts upfront or incrementally. I didn't know I had to choose that. So upfront means it's one, one step, which is kind of cool. Exposes potential fraudsters. Oh, so I guess it's it, it's faster if you do incremental. Mm. I don't even know. Customize the policies. I actually never really read these steps. I just usually skip past this. All right, now we have step number four. Integrate the account onboarding component. Create an account session by specifying the ID of the connected account and account onboarding as the component to enable. All right, so this would happen in the back end, guys. We're gonna create an account session. We're gonna choose what we wanna have, like the different options. We're gonna pass in the user's account ID. And then on the front end, we're gonna initialize the form. So it's actually pretty easy. Uh, we'll just add that right to the dashboard. So if we go to the views artist folder, we have our dashboard page. We could just add that in down at the bottom, our embedded form which will have a little bit of stimulus to do the JavaScript part. And then it'll also have an endpoint where we create the account session. 
and then we'll put it all together and it'll be super easy. So first of all, we need to initialize connect.js, which is the library, well, the JavaScript library for Stripe. So the first thing we need to do is set up connect.js. We need to add the JavaScript package. So I'm gonna add this using import maps. And to do that, we can go in the console, do dot slash bin slash import map pin. Or is it import map or import maps? I don't remember. I think it's just import map. Okay, just like that. It looks like we downloaded it and we put it in the vendor folder, which seems to be a common thing with import maps. Although I would think we would just use like the CDN, but I guess this works too. So now we need to initialize connect.js and to do that, isn't there a script tag we have to add into the header or something? Well, here's, I guess, load, connect, and initialize. That's what they're doing in the JavaScript. But I thought before I would just put it in the header. Weird they don't have that part of the docs. Or maybe they removed it. It's not required anymore. I'm honestly kind of confused. So we added the package. But in the head section, they don't have the Stripe tag anymore. Which is kind of interesting. You just do it all in the JavaScript, which maybe that's the new way. So let's just go ahead and add the JavaScript, and then if we're missing anything, we can get to that. So we're gonna have a div, and then let's add a data controller for the stimulus, and we can call it just like Stripe dash onboarding. So we're gonna need to create this stimulus controller, and to do that easily, I'm just gonna do it in the console. By doing rlg stimulus command, and we can call it stripe dash onboarding. There we go. Now we have the new stimulus controller. So now I can go into the JavaScript folder controllers stripe onboarding controller. Let's add the import statement at the top. So we're importing this load connect and initialize function. Now we can add all the rest of this other code in. That's a lot of code. Fetch client secret. So actually we're gonna, <laughs> we're honestly, we don't really need all of that code. We just need like a few little bits. So Stripe connect instance. Also we're not doing payments either. So I guess we can, let's not use that example. Uh, but we do need to initialize connect.js. So that's the part that we need. It's like annoying. Why is it so tricky? We need to do this part. But fetch client secret. Why do we need the client secret anyways? Oh, maybe they got rid of the dependency on the Stripe. I think that's what happens. So now you just use this one function to do everything. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this account onboarding example I'm gonna copy this, put it in. And then right away, we're gonna need the Stripe Connect instance, which we can do. I'm, just kind of, I'm honestly a little bit confused. So we have the fetch client secret function is important or no it's not <laughs> I guess it okay we're gonna take that fetch client secret put it up at the top although this URL is totally gonna change and we're gonna not use fetch we're gonna use request.js I'm pretty sure we used right 
Yeah, we definitely did because we used it for the audio player controller. Right or no? I'm bugging. Maybe it's the music controller. Yeah, we're importing post up here. All right, on the Stripe onboarding controller. This is getting so tricky just because they're example. But we're not going to use fetch. We're going to use post. You can import post from rel slash request.js. Also, it looks like we're not even using the load connect and initialize function. So I think I, I think I left that out. So actually, we need this part right here. It's a lot of JS. <clears throat> All right, so we are putting our publishable key right here. Publishable key is fine to expose, but I don't know if I want it hard coded here. I probably want to get it from the credentials file. So let's take care of that real quick. So I'm going to go into the layouts application and I'm just going to put the Stripe public key in the header as a meta tag. And then we can read it in JS. So you can do like a meta name, Stripe PK. And then the content is going to be coming from the Rails credentials file. So Rails application credentials, being Stripe and PK for public key. So there we go. Now we can read that in the JavaScript. We can do like a document head query selector, find the meta element, or wait, meta element with the name equals stripe dash pk, and then get the content. So that's how you do it. Now, what else do we need to update? So this URL is not going to be correct account session. We're going to pass in a URL. Let's just do it right through the HTML. So we can use a value. So add static values equals. I'm going to set a URL in here, which is going to be type string. So then we can do a post request to this URL value. We can probably leave the rest of this. Although it has like all this code for the error stuff. Console.error. Uh, this is so weird. Handle errors on the client side here. I guess, yeah, if we wanted to do that, I don't really care. Let's leave some of that. Or let's get rid of some of this code. Just console log, like there was an error if there was one. Which I guess that's what it was doing. <laughs> Wait, let's leave. Let's bring them back that code, actually. But the document query selector thing, that's not going to work because we don't even have an error element like that. But let's leave the console error. I think that's fine. Um, okay. Fetch client secret. It's going to do this. So the last thing might be like container. We don't have anything called container append child. So let's just say like this dot element. I think that should be good. All right, so the only thing that we need to do is set up this URL and pass it in through this, through the element. So it'd be like a data stripe onboarding URL value. And then we would pass in the URL. So we're gonna need a URL for this guys. And I wonder where we're going to put it. So we could do a controller. We could actually do like a Stripe controller. I think that'll be fine. And then we could have a Stripe like onboarding route and everything. So let's go over to the config routes.rb. And we can define that controller. So actually, let's just define a post. We can do this anywhere. Do post slash I guess it would basically be that URL account session to stripe account session bro all right we could do that and then we could just be like as onboarding session so it'd be onboarding session path you pass that in right here. So 
So we're gonna need a Stripe controller. Let's go to the controllers folder. Let's create a new file called Stripe controller to RB. Then we're gonna have a class Stripe controller, which is gonna inherit from application controller. And then we'll have that account session method. Actually, that's this is looking pretty good. Now let's go up to the example. So let's get rid of this page. Let's go back to the embedded onboarding docs. And we're just gonna take this example here for creating the account section. And for the account ID, we're gonna use it off of the current artist. We're gonna pass in current artist dot stripe account ID. And this should be fine. Account onboarding. All right, and then what we do is we render JSON. We actually need to set this as a variable. Account session. And we're gonna pass back client secret. I think that's what we're expecting inside of this. Yeah, we're expecting actually a client. But I can't tell. Is it client underscore secret we're expecting? All right, and then we need to get the client secret somehow. Which I don't know. They don't show us the example of like returning the JSON. It's so silly. We could actually run this in the console. We could just do a rail C and test this out. But let's set current artist to equal artist.last. And then we could just run this example. This is what it returns. Then I'm gonna set account session equals underscore. You're gonna let us look at this result. So we can I think we just say dot client secret. There we go. That's all you need. So we can just get account session and do the client secret. So now we're passing it back. And yeah, I feel like this should work. I haven't tested this at all, but I followed the example and that's really it guys. So let's reload the page and let's see if it all works. We actually got an error, something went wrong. Let's open up the console. It says response JS or no response.json is not a function. Oh, because we were still using their example for the fetch. But that's true. In in the Rails request JS library, it's not a function. It's actually a get, which means it's just like dot JSON, it's just a an attribute. Alright. Let me check, is everything else okay? I think, I think it is, but uh, you never know. You really never know. Let's reload. Oh, and look at that, it actually showed up. Now the text is a little bit hard to read with our background, so we might wanna add a background color on this div, on the Stripe onboarding div. Let's add a class, BG. 100. Well, let's reload. All right, hey, that's not too bad. Although the styling is kind of why is it going behind the buttons? That's weird. Let's add a breakpoint or a break tag there. Now there's a little bit of space between them. Hey, yeah, this looks fire. Wow. Add information to start accepting money. So that's all you got to do. Click your added information, and now this is going to make you. Or the person sign in with their email and everything and just go through the steps. So I'm going to do that real quick and then I'll come back. All right, so I just went through the steps and says, thanks for adding information. You are ready to use Spotify Rails. So I guess that means I'm good to go. All right, oh, now it's showing all my stuff. But I think we're good to go. Uh, the only thing is... <laughs> We're gonna need to set up like some more things in our app for sure. For one thing, we need to be able to tell if the artist has already put their information and then maybe we don't wanna show this form anymore because this is kind of like huge taking up a bunch of space that we don't really need to show on this page anymore. So I would like to have a check like right here that says like if the artist is 
Stripe all, so they're Stripe connected. Or even like payments set up, payments enabled. You'd have some sort of status on the artist. And then we would update that after the user has went through the process and their account has been turned on by Stripe. Because if we go to the Stripe dashboard right now, we should be able to see our new account and we'll be able to see if it's enabled or not. So let's come in here, let's go over to customer, not customers, let's go to, wait, where is the connect? Oh, I'm on the wrong, I'm on the wrong account, that's funny. We need to be on Spotify dash rails. All right, and then we can go to connect, connected accounts, and we can see who we have here. We have one account. This is the one that I just filled out. We have a couple that are restricted. So these are these are the accounts that we created for each user. And the one at the top, which has my email, is the account that I went through. And it says it's complete, which means it's ready to accept payments. Now, our app doesn't know that. We're still showing them this form. So that's what we need to fix. And to do that, we're going to use webhooks. We need to have a webhook in our app that listens for new messages from Stripe. Stripe will send the webhook that says the account was updated and it's ready to go. And then in our app, we can update that on the artist model. So to set up webhooks, we'll go over to the developer section, come over here to webhooks. And actually, I think you just test it in a local environment. So for that, we need to log in with our Stripe account and then we'll just listen and forward the requests. So that sounds good. I guess what we'll do is we'll create a new terminal session. And I'm gonna have to log in because I think I'm probably still logged in with the last app that I was using, whatever I was working on last time. Which I think it was probably one of my personal sites. So every time you need to switch which account you're logged in as. So we're just gonna go here, do the auth, and then it says like you can you can go in the drop down and choose which app you're gonna connect to. But for us, we're using Spotify Rails. So I'm going to press allow. Just like that, we're signed in, which means now we can do a Stripe listen command and forward all the webhooks to our local host 3000. And then whatever URL we choose for webhooks. So let's go and define that. And I think I'll just use the Stripe controller. We might as well at this point. So on the Stripe controller, we could have like a webhooks action. And then in the config routes.rb, let's set that new URL. And it could be a post. This could go to like slash stripe slash webhooks. Actually, I almost want to do a namespace in the URL. Let's do a namespace stripe. Which I think that will update the URL helper. So we're going to have to fix that URL on the dashboard page be like a stripe onboarding session path but i'm cool with that let's do another post for slash webhooks so go to stripe webhooks action and i think it already know it's supposed to be a webhooks okay it should be good all right so then in the terminal, we're gonna forward it to slash stripe, slash webhooks, just like that. That says you're using it. And it also is gonna give us a signing secret for our webhook. So I'm gonna copy that because we're gonna use it to authenticate the webhook request because you don't want somebody being able to forge webhooks and like they can do all this crazy stuff in your app if they know how to, you know, if you didn't authenticate via this token. Although also, you don't want to leak your token because if you ever did, then they could also. <clears throat> I don't know if they could if they could forge requests and do crazy stuff. Probably. You always want to be worried about security, or not like too worried, but aware and alert. All right, so I'm actually going to go back to our credentials file. I'm going to do Rails credentials edit environment development so I can add my webhook secret. Let's 
come in here. Let's set a webhook secret. Boom. All right. Now we can restart the server. So on this webhooks action, there is like some code we have to add. So I guess they have this whole example right here, sample endpoint. We can just follow this. Basically, um, we're gonna get the payload. I think this whole part is just about authenticating the webhook request. So let's do that in a let's do the uh, private action like auth webhook request. We can drop this code in. That's fine. The endpoint secret, we're actually gonna get that from Rails application credentials. <clears throat> Dig stripe and then webhook secret. So we just put that in our credentials file. We can use it here. And then let's add this as a before action. Auth webhook request. And then make sure that you only set it to the webhooks. Only webhooks. Since we have two actions in this controller, we have an account session action and a webhooks action. Make sure you're only running it on the webhooks action because the account session doesn't need that. The account session is like a local URL for us, which is, this is almost a reason to, to make a separate controller for webhooks. It's probably a better idea, but for right now, let's leave it like this and we can always refactor this later. I think that's good. So down here is now handling the webhook event. We put our case statement event type. Although actually, <clears throat> we need to get this event too. Huh. Forget how we usually do this. But I need to pass this event in. So I guess I could set it as an instance variable. So at event. I don't know what the point of this nil is. All right, so we're gonna set it as at event and then we should be able to use it here. You can check like the event type. Obviously we're not gonna listen for payment intent succeeded, not right now. What we need to listen for is something else. I don't even know what event we'd be listening for. Let's look. We should be able to look on our developer section. Like logs or something. And yeah, we could look at the connected accounts and see any events that they have. I mean, I know, I know really like kind of what we're looking for. I just need to look up the different type of webhook events. Types of events, that's what I'm looking for. I wonder if we want the authorized event. It occurs whenever a user authorizes an application. But I almost feel like that's different. I think what we want is account updated. Let's take that account updated event. And then inside of here, we're gonna wanna check the event and see basically is this event or is this account uh, set up for payments? Is it enabled? And maybe to make this easier, we should save the webhook events on a model. I've done that in the past. And then just in case we miss the webhook event, we can look at it and like kind of see what sort of data it has. So why don't we do that? I'm gonna open up a new terminal. 
And I'm going to do a rails g model command for webhook event. And let's put like a source. So that would be what, what platform it's coming from. So for this case, it would be Stripe. And let's also do a data, which will be type text, but we can serialize it into JSON. And we might also want to have a status, like to see if it's processed or not. We do status, which is type integer. I think that should be good. Let's run that, and then I'll run the Rails DB migrate to migrate the database. And let's go check out the models for the webhook event. So inside of here, we're gonna to need to set a few things. Like let's do an enum for the status and we're gonna give it a few types. Let's do pending, failed, and processed. We have three different types. But let's also serialize data. Now I think you have to use like a coder, which would be JSON. You also have to give it a type. So for us, it'd be like, what, object. I wonder if we can just tell it saved as JSON. I forget. Let's look it up. Serialize Rails. I know they updated it recently, so they changed it a little bit. You're supposed to put the attribute name class name or coder and then coder nil but i feel like isn't coder required now that's what they're telling me although i would like to say we could just pass it in like json like this let's see if that's it out we can just look on the webhook event model and if we get any errors then yeah but we actually get a deprecation warning passing the coder as positional argument is deprecated so i guess that's what i saw we're supposed to do coder JSON like I had before. Let's reload. Try it again. Cool. No problem there. So let's go back to the Stripe controller and we can handle creating the webhook events. I think we could just do it right here in this webhooks controller they like webhook equals actually we don't even need to save it if we don't want to say webhook event dot create source is going to be stripe and data is going to be add event i think we can just pass the whole event honestly or maybe we can call like dot data but i think we can pass the whole event Maybe call two JSON on it or something. I don't know. I don't even know what we're gonna get as a, as a webhook event here. Where would we want to do that? Maybe we'd want to set that at the top. Webhook event equals webhook event create. We're gonna pass in the event. And then I think if there was a like a failure, I guess, for some reason, we might want to update it to be failed. I'm not sure. We have those three different types on the webhook event model. So yeah, we could just say like, if we do this, we could just say failed. Webhook event dot failed. Otherwise in here, we could just do like a webhook event dot processed. So I have no idea how this is gonna work. Also, this controller is getting bloated. There's just so much stuff going on here. It's kind of crazy. So I don't want to overwhelm you guys. No, I have no idea how this is going to come together. I think we can do a stripe trigger. Stripe trigger account updated.
And it actually did pop up in our console. They're listening. But it looks like we've got a 404. It says routing error, uninitialized constant, stripe. Oh. See, because the namespace that we added, now it's expecting us to have a whole stripe module. I didn't want to have to do that. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's not even use the whole namespace thing. I think we just add a custom namespace here, like post slash stripe slash webhooks. Put it over there. All right, that sounds good. We also have to go back to the dashboard path to remove the stripe key, although I don't even know if that was working in the first place. And we should be good now. So let's do the trigger again. See what happens in the console. Now we got 422. Weird. Maybe I need to restart the server after updating the routes. I think that might be a thing. Let's try to trigger an event one more time. We still get a 422. Thing invalid authenticity token. Oh, so that's a part of Rails. It's about the CSRF token. We actually want to bypass that, not for account session, only for webhooks. Damn, at this point, we might as well move the webhooks into an, its own controller, right? For sure, because this is getting kind of tricky. Anyways, up at the top, we can do before action. Skip, or wait, no, a skip before action. Verify authenticity. I don't even remember the name of it. We might be able to see inside of here. It says can't verify CSRF token. We should have to look this up. How do I ignore the authenticity token? You do it like this. Skip before action. And we only want to do it for webhooks. All right. And we can go, we can reload, or we can trigger the event one more time. See what happens. We actually got two green and then one 500. Weirdly enough. We're actually creating the webhook events. We got an undefined local variable event or method event somewhere. Oh, right here for the unhandled event type. We were trying to access just event without the at sign because you set it to an instance variable. But the other ones were actually created successfully. So if I go into the console now, I'm doing rel C and I check like webhook event dot last. Oh, the data, the data didn't come through. Let's check the count. How many webhooks do we have? We have three. Let's check the first one, second one. None of them have the data right. They're all showing up as nil. And I just want to test like what happens if we pass in data, if we pass like some JSON. Whoops. This is what's supposed to happen. We look at the first, it should actually show up as JSON right here. For some reason, it didn't. So let's go back to that Stripe controller where we're creating the webhook event. Let's try to pass the event.data. Possibly that is important. Then let's trigger the event again. It's kind of fun. 
now we got we got two 500s now undefined method data for nil oh so it's nil that's why oh because... wait look at the positioning here we're creating the webhook event before we even define event so of course it's not going to work so let's get rid of these, like the failed everything. What we actually need to do is we need to set this right here on the webhooks action. Because then we'll already have event defined. And I don't know what attributes we're going to have, if we're going to have data or what. But that's what was happening. So let's try this again. I'm going to trigger our event. Boom, we got, I think we got only 200s. So that's good. I'm gonna check the rails console. Look at the last webhook. All right, this is what the data we got. We got the whole event. ID, like everything. Although I don't know, maybe we only wanted the data part, but even that, the data was like pretty small. There's not very much stuff in here. Yeah, I don't even know. Oh, that was the type account application authorized. Right, I'm gonna get the last two, the first. Oh, look at that. The data is a lot more. That's a huge amount of data now. See, I don't even know what I'm looking for. Whoops. All right, let's get the data off of that. Just only data. All right. So we have the type right here. So for account updated, that's good. Now I just need to look and see if it's enabled. Is there something for enabled? Payouts enabled. It actually says it's false, but I think that's what we would check. So it'd have to be like the data data payouts enabled it's supposed to return false there's something else there's like another namespace oh yeah it's it's deep in there it's an object you have to go data object there we go now we're able to get the true or false. All right, so that's what we're gonna use. Exit out of here. Finally, now inside of this, when account updated, we can now check off the event. Actually, we don't need the double namespace. We just need it like this. Event data, object, payouts enabled. So we can check if this equal to true we can update update the artist account status but right now we don't even have a status for the artist account so let's go and add that let's add a stripe status field wait what the heck my terminal is all glitched out all right let's just stop the server for a second and i'll do it here we're gonna do a Rails view migration, add stripe status to artist. Stripe status is going to be integer. I'm gonna cat this file, make sure everything looks right. So we're adding a column to the artist table, stripe status, which is type integer, it looks good. Then let's migrate the database. There we go. And we can restart the server with bin dev. So now we do have a status, but we have to go to that model. So let's go to the models folder, artist RB, and we have to define our enum. So we're gonna do that somewhere in here. Enum stripe status, and then we're gonna pass in our different statuses. So we can start off with pending, and then we can go to, yeah, let's just do payouts enabled. 
I don't know if we're going to need any other statuses. Or maybe not pending, maybe like... <laughs> not all, so I don't even know. Yeah, let's just call it like payouts pending. Or not, it's not even pending, like... This is so funny. I don't even know. Fine. We'll just leave it at pending. Although it's not actually... Like, pending means, like, it's waiting for something. But let's let's see how that looks. Let's go into Rails console. I'm just going to check on the artist.last. Because I'm pretty sure it adds them it adds them as methods, so you can ask like dot pending. But that doesn't really make sense. We could also ask dot payouts enabled to see if the payouts are enabled. So I want to add a different method like how about stripe disabled? That can be like the default. But it's not even <laughs> doesn't even make any sense. It's like stripe. How about awaiting? Awaiting. Oh, it's... oh yeah, how about awaiting onboarding? So that's what we'll check. Like artist.last dot awaiting onboarding. It says it's false. Oh, because look. The way that this works is with the status field, since we're using integer, it's expecting, you know, this would be zero, so it's using an index. The first one would be zero, the second one would be one. But on our migration that we created, we didn't set a default, actually for both of these, for both of these statuses, so they're just showing up as nil right now. So I'm actually going to go and I'm gonna do a, rollback and then fix those migrations so i'm going to do a rails db rollback in the console i'm actually going to do it twice we're rolling back both migrations real quick and we can go inside of here go to this create webhook events and i'm going to add a default i'll set it to zero we're going to do that on both of the migrations there we go and then we could do rel db migrate to bring those tables back. There we go. All right, so now we have the new fields, which means if we were to go into the console now, check the last artist, their status is going to be awaiting onboarding. You'll see it says true. All right, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our webhooks method and where i have this comment we can now add in the code right here we could just be taking the current artist and setting payouts enabled just like that that should be good so now we can go and test this and see if it's working all right guys so now that we have added in all of that code inside the webhooks section of our app now we can test out if this is working. I think we can do it by just going through the form again. Just have to sign in and hopefully it'll send that call back. I'm not sure if it will or not. Because we're not really updating, we're just signing in. All right, yeah, I just, I went through the form again and it didn't do any requests. The latest request we have is from 1245. So I don't know. You know what? Let's just remove the Stripe account from this user. We can do that in the console. And then we can just go through the process again and make sure that we're getting that webhook. So I'm going to go and open up Rails C. Let's look at the artist.last. So you can see their Stripe status is still on the awaiting state even though the stripe account id you know for this stripe account it's already set up 
So why don't we just take this and let's update this to new. And then we can just run the create Stripe account function, create a new Stripe account for this account. And then we can go through the process real quick. So if I reload, now we need to go through this again real quick. And we'll see if we get the webhook. All right, here's a moment of truth. So we just went through the form. It posted a bunch of different webhooks. Now we just need to see, did my artist account get updated? Oh, wait. No method error. Undefined method payouts enabled for nil. So it actually tried to do it, but for some reason it doesn't know about the current artist, which is interesting. Right. <laughs> Why would this happen, guys? I'm thinking it's maybe because of the scope, right? Because the scope is based off where the request is coming from, based off like cookies in the browser. So when we get a request sent directly from Stripe, it doesn't have any cookie for the current artist. It doesn't even know who the current artist is. So we wouldn't be able to access this. But there's a way around this because we have this event object we should be able to get the account ID and then look up the artist based off that. So I'm going to go in the Rails console. Let's look at like the webhook event dot last. I don't know if this is the right webhook. It says, oh, it's the right type. So let's just say that this is the right webhook. What I want to get off of it is the account. So we can just literally say account like this. And what we could do is we could look up a user by finding them by the Stripe account ID. User dot find by Stripe account ID. That should be right. It's saying it doesn't have that method. Huh. Well, maybe we can just do find by and then pass it in Stripe account ID. Ooh, we got an error. Oh wait, not user. That's what I'm trying to do it on the user model, but we need to be doing it on the artist model. There we go. So if we do it on the artist model, it, it works perfectly fine. So let's just do that to get the current artist. Since the scope of things, we don't have the cookies for this. So we have to do it a little bit different. So we'll just set the artist like right here. Artist equals artist.find by stripe account ID and then we'll pass in the event wasn't it just in this context we would just be saying event dot account all right that should work so I do want to retest this which means we have to actually update that last artist and remove the straight account ID and just go through the process one more time. There we go. So we nailed it. Now I can reload and just go through again. Oh, this is weird. Oh, because we don't have the, so I deleted it, but I never created a new account. That's what happened. So we have to do the create strip account to set that attribute. There we go. Now let's reload. Boom, we'll get the form we can go through and then let's see if these webhooks finally work. Right, I'm submitting the form right now. So here's the moment of truth one more time. You can see if it works. And whew, there's a lot of webhooks coming in. So probably the best way to check is just to go in the Rails console. We're going to check the artist all last. Oh, look, their stripe status has changed. 
So pay it's pay payouts enabled is true. This is awesome. Bet. So we got the webhook set up. Now we can update the UI. So instead of showing this form anymore on the dashboard, we can show something else like just be like, hey, you've signed up for payments or something. So let's go over to the artist dashboard page and I'm gonna add this condition finally. So if not, current artist.payout enabled. Then we're gonna show the onboarding. Make it end. Which means when we reload, we shouldn't see this form anymore. Hey, we don't see it. Now we might wanna show them somewhere that they are like, you know, their stripe is set up. So we can give them a little badge somewhere. Even though. You can just add one up here for now. Right next to the links. You can add like a span. Payments enabled. And we'll wrap this in a condition. If current artist stop payouts enabled. And we'll show this little badge so that they know that they can start making money. Ooh, payouts enabled just like that. You know what? I kind of want to do a gradient. Let's do a BG gradient. Do right from green 600 to green 400, or maybe blue. You know, give you text green 100 for the text color. All right, that looks pretty smooth. Welcome to the artist dashboard. So now you totally know, like, your payments are enabled. We could even add a money bag emoji. So you know, like, you're totally going to make a bunch of money. This is awesome. This is a huge, this is honestly a huge step in this video series. Adding payments, like, getting the artists so that we can pay them out. And I'll tell you guys, like, we can literally pay them out whenever we want. So if I look at the docs for paying out... Like paying out connected accounts, Stripe. Pretty sure it's very simple. Pay out money. I've never done this before, by the way. Add funds. Oh, I think you can do it from the Stripe console or the Stripe dashboard too. So through the Stripe website. If we come in here, let's make sure we're on the right app, Spotify Rails. And then we go over to connect, look at the connected accounts. We have a bunch of accounts now, I think. I don't even know which one would it be. We have three different accounts. I have no idea. We can check the timestamps. So it looks like, wait, 6.53, that's, it's not even six o'clock right now. Must be some different sort of time zone like a universal time zone anyways if i go over on their account go to payments oh look at this i can press create payment manual payments or wait how do i pay out no i think there's another option to add funds go to the balance section in the dashboard click add to balance so i don't know if we could do that in test Let's try to do it. So we go to balances. Oh, we have the payout funds button right here. So let's click add to balance. Add funds for future payouts to connected accounts. That's what we want to do. So let's add like a hundred bucks. And it would basically just take it from our, well, since we're in test, it's to take it from the test bank account. But once you're in production, it would just take it from your personal bank account. Which is kind of funny. Just add the balance. Oh, so now we have a hundred dollars in here. But like I said before, how I turned on manual withdrawals for payments, what that means is when we collect all the money for the subscriptions from the listeners, we could have like this huge amount of money, like you know, million dollars right here in our balance. And then whenever we want, we can click payout funds. Although I think I have to reload. Wait. How do I pay out funds? It's still grayed out. What the heck? 
Wait, it's total is a hundred available to pay out to your bank. Available. Wait, but what if I want to pay out to my connected accounts? Oh, maybe I have to go over to payouts. Create your first payout. Oh wait, that's just gonna pay it out to my bank. How do I pay out a connected user? Let's go to connected. I'm so confused. Oh, we can add funds. So I guess we do it here. Send funds to this guy. It takes it from my balance. So if we want to pay out someone like 20 bucks, just like this. And then there's also like this check mark, which is like, I guess, confirming if you want to do the transfer. I do. So boom. I just put $20 in this guy's account. Which is pretty sick. And then probably one thing we could do right now is we could show them on the artist dashboard how much money like you're expecting to get. So we could probably print that out from the Stripe API. So I think we could even try to look at that in the console right now because we have the account ID. Wait, Stripe account ID. So we should be able to look up their current balance. I'm just gonna look up Stripe account docs. I wanna find, yeah, the account object. All right, so this is what the docs looks like. What I wanna do is I wanna retrieve an account. I guess it's as simple as just doing this, Stripe account retrieve. It's gonna give us a bunch of information. I'm just gonna retrieve the last artist, which is the one that I'm signed in as. All right, this is what we get. All of this JSON back. Uh, but I think one part of it should show like maybe how much money they're expecting. I don't know. <laughs> how do I do that? Uh, maybe it's different. All right, let me just look it up in the search bar. Payouts, like I just wanna look up the payout for a current, for like a user. How to find payout balance or upcoming payout balance with Stripe connected account. That's all I'm trying to get. And I'm trying to get it through the API so I can show it inside of my app. It should be simple. It says you can view upcoming payouts on the balances page of the dashboard. Well, I want to do it in the API. We can also do it here. Oh, look, there's a whole page about this. So there's a class called Stripe Balance Retrieve. So we just do it like this. It's super easy. We can do it right here in the console. The Stripe account is going to be off the artist's last. Right, account ID. Put it up. Boom, look at that. This is what we get back. We say like the balance equals underscore. And we can see this object. So I guess we can do available amounts. Right or no? Oh, it's an array. So we want to get like the first one. And then get the amount. Oh, look, and it's two thousand. Although it's obviously not two thousand dollars, it's twenty dollars because you have to divide it by a hundred. So divide it by not a thousand, a hundred. Yeah. All right, that seems pretty straightforward. So we could honestly, in the most simplest version, we could just put that right onto the page. Like, we go in the controller, artist controller dashboard. First, let's do an if statement. So if current artist 
chaos enabled. Then we're gonna get the balance object. And I'm gonna uh, memoize it. So memoizing just means, I don't know. It should have some caching benefits if we were to like run this over and over again. I guess it's more helpful for putting this in an action that might get ran more than once. But we could probably do it here too. And I'm literally just gonna take the code right from here where we're retrieving the balance. So memoizing means like two pipes and an equal sign. Instead of just doing like an equal sign like this. I don't know if this is gonna speed it up, but it's just kind of I'm hoping. And instead of artist last, I'm gonna do the current artist. So there, we have the balance. And then as you saw, it was kind of tricky to get like the actual avail available amount. We had to do some tricks. We had to do like available. And then there's an array. So I wonder, can you have multiple different amounts that are, I think you can. So like, let's go and give this guy more money. Inside of here, I'm going to click add funds again. Do like $10 and send it over. Boom, we just sent 10 bucks. Now if we rerun this code. And we check balance dot available. We still only have one item in the array, so I don't know. Anyways, we can just access, I guess, that item. So now on the dashboard page, let's do, let's actually remove the, like the exclamation mark for making it if not. And let's just do if, and then we can add an else. Now up here in this condition, if it if they are paid out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show their balance. Let's just have like a little div like I'm center. So I'm gonna center the items and I'm gonna give it a height and a width, width full. Let's give it a max width. It's gonna be like a decent sized card. Can even do like a background color, rounded large, shadow large, and then we can print out our balance, which I'm going to use number to currency, which is a helper in Rails, which will convert a number into like a you know a value or into a price with like a dollar sign and everything. We're going to pass in balance available. Let's get the first item in the array, amount, and we're gonna divide by 100. So like that. Now I don't, I don't know if this is gonna work or if it's gonna throw an error. Let's reload and see what happens. Oh, totally works. So this is what it looks like right now. Saying we have 30 bucks. Now I wanna make the text larger. Instead of text 2XL, let's do like 3XL. Maybe a large one. And also let's make the sizing less. Oh, because we already have 5XL on the width around here. So why don't we just do like a width half. All right. And then I also want to take this BR and move it outside of the condition. So that it just always applies. All right. I think that'll fix the styling up. Give it a little bit of space. Wait. Oh, there we go. We got the space. Yeah, it looks all right. Uh, almost, I'm tempted to just do like a gradient as the text color. Also do a font bold. It's, I feel like the money is pretty important. Like this is the most important part of the app. Might as well have like a bold freaking thing showing you how much money. Oh, also we should give them some sort of description because right now it's just showing money in a box. You don't know like, is that my money or is that, what is that? So let's give it a little bit of a description. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the text 5XL and put it down here so it's only on the number. I don't know why I put in a P, but we're gonna use another P on top where we can put the description. So like your, wait. Your upcoming payouts include your 
upcoming paid outs total amount. I don't know. This is what it looks like. All right, so we're going to have to fix up that styling. Let's move the font bold also only on the number. And then let's add flex call so that they stack on top of each other instead of side by side horizontally. All right, we're getting there. Now, also, I kind of want to do like some padding bottom, I think. Padding bottom eight, because I want to push the content up a little bit. All right, I think that's getting there. Now, like I said, I want to do a gradient for the text color. So to do that in Tailwind, we're going to apply the class onto the element that's wrapping just the money. I'm going to do BG clip text, text transparent, and then you can add any color you want, or even a background image. So we're going to do BG gradient to right, from pink 500 to purple 400. It's going to be like a very bright color. Oh yeah, look at that. It looks pretty happy. It matches the background. Your upcoming payouts, total amount. They're like, how would we just call it like your current balance will pay out daily. Or we can say like, payouts happen daily. So that's like how much you made just today. Man, if I was an artist, I'd be pretty happy. Just being on this platform, looking at how much money I made. This is sick. Now let's test out, let's just make sure that everything works for a new artist. So let's sign out and let's sign up as a new artist. So I don't know what my artist name is gonna be. Maybe it's really green outside. So let's be like Green Texas. But green Texas T. That's a good artist name. Sign up. I just want to make sure there's no errors. All right, no errors, guys. It looks good. And then obviously we have this form right here. We're saying like you have to add our information to accept the money. But you can still post a song without signing up, which I guess might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. I don't know. I'm going to have my first song be Texas T. I'm gonna go to Unsplash, try to find like a picture of Texas. See, this is what, I feel like a lot of people think Texas looks like this, but not all of it. I haven't, I haven't even seen a place that looks like this in, I don't even know how long. Probably since I was a really little kid. I would love to go over there to like West Texas. I'm talking about Texas Hill Country. Wait, no way that's in Texas. It's a temple. Yeah, this is more what like the hill country looks like. It's green, especially right now since it's been raining a lot. Anyways, let's put our image in for the audio. I got some music on my computer. Let's just put a random one. Ooh, and we have our first song. So now if we go to here, actually I'm gonna sign out, go over to the music page. Boom, we have all the music. So yeah, guys, in this episode, I'm just gonna do a quick recap. We added in Stripe, the library. We set up our Stripe account. We added the API keys. We set up our connect. So that all stuff, all that stuff is really important to get to the point where we're at right now. We added onboarding for the artists so that they could sign up, add their bank account information. And now we can directly pay out them whenever we want. We can pay out money to them. So from here, we're just going to need to create more of like the marketplace, the circle of money going around in our app, you know, the money going through the app. So the next thing is going to be having a subscription. So the people who want to listen to music, you know, you're going to have to help the artists. You're going to have to pay. So we're going to add in that subscription mode. So somewhere on this page is going to prompt them to subscribe and it'll be like $9.99, $10 a month or whatever. You get all these benefits and then I guess we'll just pay the artist based off some algorithm. So like however many times you listen to them, which right now we're not even storing listen. So that's something that we're gonna have to build soon. I think this is good for this video, but I'm going to come back very shortly. Yeah, stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to be adding in, you know, counting the counting how many times people listen to your song. 
We can even count how long they listened. We can store that data. We can give you analytics and then also just pay you out based off some algorithm. I know like Spotify algorithm is crazy. Like you can look up how much does Spotify pay and it's all based off your listens. So it's saying it pays between, I don't even know what that is, like a milli cents. <laughs> they pay three milli cents per stream, which is insane. But yeah, that's kind of how it goes, you know? So if you get a thousand streams, you could get paid 3000 for a million streams. So yeah, it's whatever. That's what's up with the milli cents though. You have to like multiply this by like uh, a million streams. It's not bad. You'd be making 30K a month if you get 10 million streams every month, which really doesn't seem like that much when you think about it. There's artists who get way more streams than that. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. We're going to be back very soon to continue on the series. I had a lot of fun building this, adding a stripe. I'm just really excited about the future of this app. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.